My dear, your old woman is going to a nursing home because I'm moving in with Catherine, Darrow announced bluntly, his words cutting through the air. His eyes met mine briefly, but there was no warmth, only a hint of challenge. If you don't like it, we can divorce. Catherine, standing beside him, wore a malicious grin that unsettled me. Good manners, I thought bitterly, are fundamental even among close friends, yet some people can't grasp that concept. I couldn't fathom living with someone who couldn't maintain basic courtesy, especially towards family. It was unbearable, seeing how Catherine treated my dear mom with disdain. I knew then that I needed to sever ties with both Daryl and Catherine, who had neglected and disrespected my mother. My name is Alisa, a 32-year-old working wife. Our family have returned to my childhood home two years ago, after Dad's passing, to care for Mom, who had become withdrawn after losing her beloved partner. Back then, Daryl had been recently laid off, and we were struggling financially. Concerned for Mom's well-being, I proposed that we move in together. Daryl, though hesitant at first, had little choice in the matter. With a demanding professional license and responsibilities that filled my weekdays, my schedule was packed. Mom took charge of the household chores during the week, and I pitched in on weekends. Daryl, however, seemed uninterested in lifting a finger. Despite his ongoing job hunt and evident stress, neither Mom nor I broached the subject. It took him six months to secure a job after moving in, but excuses about job stress and overtime fatigue replace any initiative toward chores. Men aren't known for their attention to detail, Mom would quit with a smile that barely masked her disappointment. Meanwhile, my frustration grew steadily. I work longer hours than you and even weekends. Why won't you help with the chores? I finally confronted Daryl one evening. He grimaced defensively. I'm just not cut out for housework. That's not an excuse, I countered firmly. I wasn't either, but I made an effort to learn. You don't even try. Things are different now, he shrugged, retreating from the conversation. You had time to learn. I'm too busy now. His dismissal hung in the air as he turned away, leaving me to wrestle with the unresolved tension. Mom had been struggling with her knees lately, making it all the more important for us to share the housework. However, Darrow showed no inclination to help from the start. Over time, it became the accepted norm that Daryl would avoid any household chores. A new issue surfaced recently when Darrow started inviting his sister Catherine over on weekends. Catherine, who was five years my senior, lacked the maturity and common sense one might expect from an adult. I had never been fond of her due to her poor manners. Upon entering our home, Catherine kept her hat on and carelessly tossed it onto the table. Ignoring Mom, who owned the house, she rudely asked, Old woman, got any coke? We don't have coke, Mom replied, visibly taken aback by Catherine's lack of manners. Catherine continued as if speaking to her own parents, Well, you should go buy some. It's bad manners not to offer anything to guests. Please buy your own. We didn't expect any guests. I interjected firmly, hoping to finally quiet her down. Despite multiple warnings, Catherine continued her intrusive behavior, opening doors to other rooms and helping herself to dessert from the fridge. Talking to Daryl about it proved futile. Look, when Catherine comes over, neither mom nor I can relax, I explained to Daryl one evening. It's okay occasionally, but every week is too much. If you're both free, why not go out somewhere instead of always coming here? It's becoming a burden on my family. I live with your mother, Dina, out of necessity. You should be grateful and not complain, Daryl retorted defensively. That's a separate issue, I insisted. I wish you wouldn't equate mom with Catherine. Mom is quiet and unassuming, while Catherine's behavior causes us a lot of trouble. It's not separate, Darrow argued back. I allow Dina to live with us, so Catherine's visits should be accepted. Frustrated, I countered, Mom and Catherine are not the same. Mom deserves respect, unlike Catherine, who is rude to both of us. My words sparked a heated argument with Darrow, who seemed unable to grasp the difference. Darrell had been a quiet, reserved person since our marriage, but his demeanor changed noticeably after losing his previous job. He spoke remorsefully about being laid off due to poor performance, and despite my sympathy, I still expected him to maintain basic manners. However, the issue of Catherine's frequent visits was just the beginning. One day, Catherine showed up at our doorstep with a large bag in tow. Get ready for me, she announced abruptly, leaving both mom and me taken aback. Daryl was the only one to greet her warmly, saying, Catherine, good to see you. Welcome. This is your home from now on. 
While we did have a spare room that had once been Dad's study, I was reluctant to have Catherine use it. What's going on is that Catherine is moving in here from today, he declared bluntly. Neither Mom nor I have been informed of this decision. Stop nagging, he continued sharply. I have decided that Catherine's moving in. If you have a problem with that, your old woman is going to a nursing home. If you don't like it, we can divorce. His words rang out, and behind him, Catherine smirked maliciously. I'm so shocked that my body stiffens, rendering me unable to respond. The anger surges within me, especially at the disrespect shown towards my mom. Daryl, undeterred, continued to dictate. Dina, Catherine will be using your room. You'll have to move to the study, he stated with authority. What? Mom's expression mirrored my disbelief. Daryl and Catherine proceeded upstairs. Mom and I trailed behind, only to witness them attempting to rearrange Mom's belongings in her own room. That's enough. I erupted, unable to contain my frustration. Fine, let's get divorced. Now please leave. What? Are you serious? Daryl looked down at me with a dismissive laugh. Without hesitation, I nodded firmly. I am serious. I've reached my limit with you and Catherine. Living with her is not an option. If you're suggesting divorce, I'm prepared for it. I'll take care of my mom, I asserted. You're willing to throw away your life for an old woman with limited years left. You don't understand. Spending the rest of my life with you would be the real waste, Daryl retorted sharply. You brought up divorce, so let's follow through, I insisted. Fine, until I find a new place, Catherine will stay in my room. Why don't you move over to your beloved Dina's room? Daryl countered, his tone challenging. That's my plan anyway. Don't come to regret divorcing me later. I've been under stress, always putting your mother first. I won't regret this, I affirmed firmly. Both Daryl and Catherine looked down on me and chuckled, likely anticipating a favorable outcome in the property division during the divorce. Swiftly, I packed my belongings and relocated to Mom's room. Having endured discomfort sharing a room with Daryl for so long, I finally found peace in my new sleeping quarters. Concerned, Mom approached me, asking, Are you sure about the divorce? You'll be alone now. Don't worry, Mom. I'm okay with it. You mean more to me than that man. I reassured her earnestly. Mom nodded sadly, though she bore no blame for the situation. Once the divorce was finalized, I planned a vacation for Mom and myself to lift our spirits and start anew. I was determined to ensure her happiness. The divorce proceedings proceeded smoothly, with the property settled and Catherine vacating just a week after moving in. It had been an agonizing week. Catherine had taken over the kitchen, wasting ingredients with her haphazard cooking, which often resulted in inedible dishes being tossed out. She also disrupted the nights with blaring music and even consumed a cake I had purchased from a renowned chef, intended to be shared with mom. After leaving our home, the two of them moved into a well-located condo. Daryl resumed his work routine while Catherine planned to take on a part-time job. You might expect that to be the end of our connection with them, but it wasn't. Feeling the need to release all my pent-up frustration, I decided to visit my in-law's house unannounced. My mother-in-law, Posey, was a step up from Catherine but still someone I didn't particularly like, often making snide remarks about me. Among them, my father-in-law, Oswald, stood out as the most reasonable and decent person in the family. Initially, I hadn't minded Posy or Catherine much because Daryl and Oswald seemed decent. It turned out I had misjudged Daryl. Without calling ahead, I arrived at my in-law's home and announced through the intercom to Posy, I've come to say goodbye. We're divorced. Reluctantly, Posy let me in. I entered, still wearing my hat, and opened what I assumed was Posy's room. What are you doing? Posy asked, clearly displeased. Oh, I thought this was the custom in this house, given how Catherine behaved. How rude, I remarked, brushing off Posy's visible annoyance as I entered the room. Oswald was nowhere to be seen, leaving Posy flustered by my unexpected visit. Assertively, I settled onto the living room sofa and made a request, mirroring Catherine's past behavior. Could you get me a Coke? What? We don't have Coke. Can't you go buy some yourself? Posy replied sharply. What's this about? You're here to apologize for the divorce, right? I heard you had an affair, and now you act like this. An affair? I haven't done anything like that. Show me proof before you make such accusations. Besides, this is how your daughter treated us in our home. Didn't you raise her to act this way? And now you find my behavior rude? I challenged, watching as Posy paled and fell silent. 
I don't know anything about Catherine's actions. She's never listened to me. No matter how much I scold her, Posey admitted with a hint of resignation. So you gave up on trying to teach her, which is why you have such a selfish and self-centered daughter and son. Daryl is different. He's always been quiet and never caused trouble for anyone. I countered pointedly. Then why would such a polite person bring his sister into our home without asking and try to evict my mom from her own room? The reason we divorced is because Daryl told me if I didn't want to live with Catherine, then we should divorce. Where did this affair story come from? I pressed, watching as Posey looked bewildered and stared at the ground in silence. Seeing the futility of further discussion, I stood up. Please instruct your children not to behave like this in the future. I apologize for my abrupt behavior today. I concluded firmly before taking my leave. Following the incident, my parents-in-law formally approached me to apologize. I insisted, please apologize to mom, prompting Oswald to express sincere regret and even provide compensation for the inconvenience caused. Mom was visibly moved by the gesture. I later heard that Posey had called Daryl and Catherine to their home and scolded them. While Posey had her faults, she seemed to pale in comparison to Catherine's behavior. My reenactment of Catherine's actions must have struck a nerve, prompting Posey to realize that changes were necessary. It was rumored that both parents had given their children a stern talking to, but it appeared that Daryl and Catherine's problems were far from over. Sometime after Mom and I had relocated, Daryl called me unexpectedly. Hey, Elisa, where are you? Why do you need to know? I replied coolly. Because your house is up for sale. Daryl's frustration was evident in his raised voice. I reiterated my question, why do I need to tell you where I am? Well, that's, he hesitated, seemingly grasping the significance of my question, because I still love you. I realize how much I missed you after you left. I regret my behavior. I was just putting on a front for Catherine. I truly wanted to cherish you and Dina, but I've always struggled to stand up to Catherine. No matter how much he claims to have changed or apologizes or even professes his love, my heart remains unmoved. There's no forgiving the way he brought Catherine into our home, threatened divorce, and insulted my mom, I asserted firmly. I don't care how you feel. We're divorced. No amount of apologies or money will make me reconsider, I stated resolutely. Don't say that. I've realized how much I value you and Dina. I promise it won't happen again. Just give me one more chance, Daryl pleaded desperately. You're just looking for someone to do the housework, aren't you? I groaned feeling vindicated by his admission. I just blurted something out, but it seems I hit the mark. Besides, I can't believe you're asking to get back together, I added incredulously. You're unbelievable. Remember how you laughed when we discussed divorce? How you and Catherine looked down on mom and me? Now the tables have turned, I concluded with a mix of frustration and satisfaction. His attitude changed. You're getting cocky just because I'm being humble here, Daryl retorted defensively. Weren't you supposed to be remorseful? Didn't Oswald and Posey teach you anything about consideration and taking responsibility? You should be the one apologizing. I heard you were disrespectful to mom. You've even lied and blamed Catherine for it. That scolded both of us because of your actions, I countered, frustration evident in my tone. His dismissive attitude prompted a laugh from me. Are you seriously saying you've never faced consequences from your parents? Is this how you act at your age? Some people your age are raising families and navigating life responsibly. Meanwhile, here you are in your thirties, acting like a teenager. This is the life you chose. Stop deflecting blame and start taking accountability, I continued firmly. You think this is all a joke, don't you? If you can't understand what I'm saying, there's no point in talking to you. Don't contact me again, I stated firmly before ending the call and blocking Daryl's number. Afterward, I continued to receive notifications of missed calls from Daryl, but I had no intention of responding to any of them. I heard through the grapevine that Daryl and Catherine had moved into a condo, but neither of them bothered with any housework, quickly turning their new home into a hoarding mess. Eventually, they were asked to leave by the condo owner due to the bad smell and Catherine's disruptive behavior. In a rush, they hired a cleaning company and things briefly improved. However, their place soon fell back into disarray. It wasn't long before they reached out to me for help. Additionally, Catherine's spending habits were extravagant. She had relied on her boyfriend in the past, but he had broken up with her because of her reckless behavior. I couldn't muster any sympathy for her plight. 
They're both facing financial struggles now that Catherine relied heavily on Darrow's income and spent recklessly. After settling into my new place, I decided to take a trip with my mom. She seemed melancholic, blaming herself for my divorce. Our trip to Hawaii, however, lifted her spirits, and I saw her smile brightly for the first time in a while. Looking ahead, I'm not making any firm plans. Perhaps I'll remarry someday, but only to someone who values family and has basic manners. Otherwise, I'm content being single. My focus remains on working hard and ensuring my mom is well cared for.